When Nintendo announced the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Switch, I really wanted it. It was much cooler than my boring launch day Switch with gray controllers. Plus, Pikachu and Eevee are such cuties, which was hard to resist. We each wanted our own Switch, so my husband bought me the Pokemon Switch for my birthday, and he claimed my old one. I was so excited to finally have that baby in my hands, until one day Nintendo announced the Animal Crossing Switch. Why was this one way cuter? It had a light cream colored dock with a cute design featuring the Nook family. Plus it had pastel Joy-Cons and those Joy-Cons had colored straps. My Pokemon Switch suddenly felt so boring in comparison. First of all, the characters were one solid color each. And why was Eevee a weird yellowish brown color reminiscent of my daily diarrhea? I felt robbed, cheated, bamboozled. It was then that I thought of giving my Switch a custom paint job. I had been considering painting my older consoles for several years, but never got around to it. This time was different though. This was personal. I wanted my Switch to be cuter, even if it meant taking matters into my own hands. And that is how this jealousy-fueled project was born. So here's the last look at the Pokemon Switch in its original form. I know some people might be mad I'm customizing a limited edition item, but I don't buy consoles just to sell them for profit later in life. I actually keep all my old consoles. Plus, it's not like I'm running into your house and painting your Switch. Anyway, after planning out my design in Photoshop, I ordered the necessary parts online. Mainly, I needed parts for the Joy-Cons. I wanted to change their color without relying on paint since paint is prone to chipping and a lot of sealants can be slightly sticky when dry. Plus, I just wanted a smooth, professional look. I ordered pink shells and blue buttons. Most button sets don't include the plus minus home and screenshot buttons, so I ordered that set separately in white. I also bought a separate set of Joy-Cons to mod so I could keep the original Eevee controller intact. Taking the Joy-Cons apart was very nerve-wracking at first, especially with all the tiny pieces and fragile ribbons. I found myself saying, wait, was there a long screw here or a short one? Or which way was this ribbon oriented? And there were these little springs that popped out before I could even see how they were positioned in the first place. Let's just say I had to rewind the tutorial video many times. <laughs> I even had to reopen the Joy-Cons to fix things I screwed up, which was especially fun when I stripped the screws on the right Joy-Con. <laughs> After a lot of struggling, I got the screws out, fixed my mistake, and replaced them with the screws that the buttons came with. So happy they included those screws. So happy. <laughs> For the right Joy-Con, I only replaced the buttons and kept the yellow shell. The final step was to put a white silicone cap on each joystick. So there they are, the finished Joy-Cons. Definitely an upgrade in my opinion. <laughs> it may have taken me over three hours to customize them, but it was worth it. And now that I've done it once, I could easily do it again, I think. <laughs> if you ever do this, I recommend starting with the left Joy-Con like I did because the right one has shorter ribbons and additional fragile wires, which could easily be damaged. Now, moving on to the Switch dock. The first thing I did was prime the surface with gesso. I had to do four coats to get it fully opaque, letting it dry fully between each coat. The gesso helps other layers of paint stick to the switch, plus it meant I would need less layers of paint later since I wouldn't be trying to cover up black plastic with pastel paint colors. The white is just a nice, clean base. I also made sure to cover up the outlines around Pikachu and Eevee, because it just looked weird. I then mixed up some light blue acrylic paint for the base color. I painted the front, top, and sides of the dock, but not the back or bottom since they wouldn't be visible. So I did two coats of that blue and then I painted the details on Pikachu and Eevee. I wanted to spruce up their monochromatic design, so I added color to areas like their eyes, Pikachu's cheeks and back, Eevee's mouth and mane thingy. That bit of color alone made a huge difference in how they looked. But I was also going one step beyond that. I gave them floral crowns. <laughs> and honestly, it looks so freaking cute. Best decision ever. <laughs> For the color scheme, I was sticking to pastel primaries. So pink, yellow, and blue. That's why Pikachu's cheeks are also pink instead of red. And in the middle where the Switch logo used to be, I put a large flower with two smaller ones. 
I didn't want to overcrowd the design with too many flowers, so that felt like a good fit. Then I used a black Posca pen to fix up the outlines, which was super stressful because I wanted it to look quite clean and neat. It was a fine tip Posca, but it would have been a little bit easier if it had an even finer tip, but it worked out in the end. I just had to use a really light hand. <laughs> I also used Posca pens to add the little details in the center of the flowers, and I wanted more flowers on the actual Switch console, not just the dock, so I painted flowers on some vinyl sticker paper. Before cutting them out, I coated them in Gamvar, which is a varnish, and I also varnished the Switch dock so all the paint would be protected. And the last thing I did was I cut out the stickers and put them on the Switch. So here's the final look at the Switch. I really like the choices I made, especially in deciding which parts get paint and which ones don't. I was trying to figure out what would look best and also what would be most durable. So I like how the only part that was directly painted was the dock, which will be handled minimally. It will mostly just sit in one spot, so that should hopefully help preserve the paint. Then the Joy-Cons, which do get handled a lot, have no components painted by me, which should extend durability. I did notice the blue buttons were white plastic painted blue, so hopefully the color won't rub off over time. Hopefully it's some kind of durable industrial paint. <laughs> At least now I know how to replace the buttons if I ever need to in the future. The stickers on the Switch are hand painted, but they're stickers, so they can easily be removed or replaced. I think this looks a bit better than using skins, especially for the Joy-Cons. I'm just happy with the choices I made. And yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with how this looks. I can't stop looking at it all the time. And it was just a super fun project. I've been meaning to do it for a while, so finally did it. And now for the outro, I'm just going to discuss the animation a little bit. Hey guys, so I just want to say some final words for this video because I haven't posted here in a month and my last video was one about me talking about how I don't enjoy filming art videos as much as I used to. I wasn't sure if I wanted this Switch custom paint job to be a video because it's not a super elaborate paint job so I, I, I figured it'd be a short video, didn't know if it'd even be that interesting, but it was something I just really wanted to do in general, even if it wasn't for a video. But then I also really wanted to animate, and then I got the idea of doing the animated intro for it, and that's when it all just clicked, and I'm like, yes, this, this totally works. It was just a great way to do two things I wanted to do, plus turn it into a video. So, so I'm just so happy with this. It's not a ton of animation, but I was trying to relearn the animation software, which is Toon Boom Harmony. I mostly did 3D animation back in my animation days. It's what I learned the most in school. It's what I did exclusively when I worked in a studio was 3D animation in Maya. So 2D is not my forte. <laughs> I just need to get back into the swing of things though like just kind of relearn some stuff and yeah just just even the speed from the first few shots I did compared to the last ones I got so much faster and it was it was great so while I feel like it took me forever to get this video out <laughs> I know it's not gonna take me that long to do a comparable video in the future it depends how fancy I get with the animation because when it comes to 2D, I really like frame by frame animation which is when you redraw each frame so kind of like the Pikachu and Eevee shot and that one, took, <laughs> that one took a really long time. That was also one of the first ones I did, so I was kind of relearning the program, but you know, I just try to insert little bits of frame by frame stuff here and there, because I can't do all of it frame by frame. That would take me forever. <laughs> I would need a whole team of people for that, but you know, I just get in little bits and pieces, even if it means the shot overall is more simple. What else do I want to say? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I had a lot of fun with this and I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing for my next video, but I like how this turned out because it's like taking a more simple idea and sprucing it up with animation. So that kind of opens the doors for other projects for this channel, things that I normally maybe wouldn't turn into a video. So I'm, I don't know. I'm just excited to see where things go. The animation definitely adds a lot of time put into the video a lot but I think it's worth it I feel bad I won't be posting as much here but you know I, I'm always around I stream on twitch a lot I did a lot of this animation on stream and I post on my vlog channel a few times a week so I'm around if you want more of me I want to show you a couple other things I animated recently I made a be right back screen for my twitch channel and the text brb just pulses while there's a little ladybug running around and each time it pulses it propels the ladybug upwards so that's the be right back screen and then I have a second one that I use for when I'm taking a lunch break and normally there would be a 15 minute timer at the top that counts down that's why there's a gap there so it's the same ladybug animation 
but with a white outline and then the lunch break text wiggles and then there's a little bit of animation on the character she blinks and occasionally sucks on the straw so that's some other stuff i animated in this past month that's all i want to say thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video